Greetings from Dakota Territory, the Black Hills, United States of America. Stan Jibalisco here. I'd like to continue the discussion about LC filters uh, in regards to the book Beginner's Guide to Reading Schematics, 3rd edition, published by McGraw-Hill, October 2013. I recommend the paperback version or paper-bound version with a spiral binding that will lay flat on your workbench, heavy stock paper. Has no battery, requires no boot up, acquires no bugs nor viruses, and if you spill your diet Mountain Dew on it, all it will get is wet. Go to the playlist entitled Beginner's Schematics on my YouTube channel. Just put enter my name, Stan Jabalisco, into the YouTube uh, search box. You'll come across my channel and go to the playlist, Beginner Schematics. You'll find a whole bunch of videos having to do with diagrams in this book. And I, uh, in the just the video right before this one, talked about LC circuits. LC meaning inductance capacitance. Why they call inductance L, I, uh, I guess I don't know the answer to that. I can understand why they'd call a capacitor C or capacitance C, but as for inductors being L, I have no clue. If you know, email me and tell me. Go to my website, sciencewriter.net, shoot me an email and tell me. Where does that come from? L. Where does that come from? Well, anyway, what I showed you in the past vid uh, video was a low-pass LC filter starting out with what they would call an L network. L network. Now, don't get this L confused with inductance. That's another thing here. It's because of the shape of the circuit configuration as it's drawn in the diagram. If you rotate this 90 degrees clockwise, then hold the page up, turn it around, look in a mirror, it will look like an L. That's why it's called an L network. And then I went in further and talked about a Pi network, finally a Pi L network. I recommend you watch that uh, video, by the way, on low-pass LC filters because the topic here, it's diagrams that are not actually covered in the book, Beginner's Guide to Reading Schematics. Uh, I don't know exactly why I didn't uh, mention them. I guess they had uh, uh, size constraints on the book or something. But notice these circuits have series connected inductors and parallel connected capacitors, which tend to discriminate against the higher frequencies and let the lower frequency signals pass. The exact cutoff frequency, if you had graph amplitude versus frequency for any of these, the cutoff frequency is determined by the values of the inductors and the capacitors. All of the inductors have the same value, all of the capacitors have the same value. Well, you might think, how about that we try something a little, di a little bit different. How about we reverse the components and connect the capacitors in series instead of in parallel and connect the inductors in parallel instead of in series. Suppose we do this. Now we have a capacitor and an inductor, an LC network again. Again it's an L network L meaning the shape of the configuration, but what we have now is a situation where capacitors tend to pass energy more and more easily as the frequency goes up and they attenuate it or they choke it off more, their impedance goes up as the frequency goes down. Inductors just the reverse, their impedance goes uh, down as the frequency goes up and up as the frequency goes down. So when we do this, what we're going to get is a high pass filter. It's going to have just the opposite kind of response 
from the low pass filter. It's going to look something like this. Frequency on the horizontal axis increasing to the right, amplitude on the vertical axis increasing going up. Okay. Well, that's cool. Remember, the capacitors pass energy more easily as the frequency goes up, so they'll, the series capacitor will let the higher frequencies get through more easily. The inductor tends to uh, pass frequencies more easily as, pardon me, the, the frequency more easily as the frequency goes up. Uh, capacitors tend to pass, <laughs> I'm getting myself confused. Capacitors pass the frequency, the signal more easily as the frequency goes up. An inductor passes the signal more easily as the frequency goes down. It tends to choke off the higher frequencies. So the lower frequency components will tend to get shorted to ground through this inductor, uh, operating in the same, conspiring with the capacitor to create this response. If I said earlier that inductors pass energy more easily as the frequency goes up, disregard that statement, disregard that statement. It was inaccurate. Inductors pass signals more easily as the frequency goes down. They choke off signals at the higher frequencies. Well, okay, that's an L network. We can add another inductor and get a pi network, just like we did before with the low-pass filter. Now we have a pi network. Derives its name from this configuration, looks something like a Greek letter pi. That'll provide a little bit sharper of a response. Maybe something like that. Finally, as we did before, we can add another series component and another parallel component. L1, L2, L3, C1, C2, output, input. This is a pi L network because it's like a pi with an L tacked onto it and as you might guess we get a, an even sharper response, something like that. The cutoff frequency, again, depends upon the values of these components. The capacitors have identical value, the inductors have identical value. So, and as before, with the low-pass filter, if you keep cascading more and more of these, if you just keep adding L's onto it, you know, getting a pi L, 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 or maybe you might call it a pi L to the 25th power network. I mean, you know, you could go on and on and on and expect, hopefully, you're going to get a perfect, a perfect cutoff like that. It's not going to happen. You're going to approach it, but you're never really going to get all the way there. In fact, if you keep doing that, you're just going to be wasting your money. Hopefully, though, you don't think that you've wasted your time if you've listened to me for this long. So, once again, I remember, uh, remember to, uh, once again, I remember the book, Beginner's Guide to Reading Schematics. Oh, do I ever. I love doing that revision. It was a blast. If you want more details about electricity and electronics and how circuits like this work, a lot more nitty-gritty mathematical detail with examinations and diagrams and discussions of complex numbers and vectors and if you're really into all that stuff and you can stand 700 pages worth of it get the book teach yourself electricity and electronics it always all the covers of this book every edition it's always had food this is ice cream cones with uh, little i don't know what do these things look like they look like little I don't know exactly what those are. Now, I'm an electronics expert, you would suppose, and I don't even know what those are. These are potentiometers, little pieces of wire, little integrated circuits, kind of, kind of warped and melted on there. Vanilla, peach, 
Chocolate. Stan Gibalisco. Signing off until next time. So long.